Working all the effort, even all the time, but you are just a spell. You am moving oh, 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 on the treadmill. Your legs are moving, your body's working, but you are just a spell. You ain't going nowhere. They should tell you early. They don't want you, they don't need you, or they prefer somebody else. Chitty daddy world. You're in love with that special someone. Consider a lifelong companion. The question is, does that someone love you? You try your best to do things right. You try your best to satisfy. Then you realize your best is never good enough. Oh, oh, oh. Dissect. Of course, I go by the name of novelist, and I got the crew with me. But tonight we have a special, special, brand new host joining us, and she goes by the name of Jewel. So let's welcome Jewel to the first episode. Well, her first time on Dissect. What's up? Hey, hello, hello. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. You, you look happy. You ready? I'm ready. Nice. And of course, <clears throat> we have the man, DJ Kaza. Everybody know my it's Iman Daru in the building. What up? <clears throat> How is everybody out there this evening? Especially if you're in Canada. I know it's 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 really warm and nice up here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And of course, you know, we have Nika. She's still with us in the back. What's up, Nika? You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. I'm good. I know we're waiting for our guest tonight. Our guest tonight, of course, is um, Tasha P. And she'll be joining us uh, shortly, hopefully. And uh, we could get the show um, rolling, man. So, Jules, maybe we could, you know, find out a little bit about you quickly. <laughs> hey, am I the one being interviewed tonight? <laughs> of course. Well, you know, we, we got we to gotta kill some time, right? <laughs> The pre-screen so, before the screen. Well, what do you want to know about me? Well, I guess the people would like to know about you. Who's that girl? Where she's from? Like, you know, like, you know, who's that Jewel? So I guess let's start with um, where you're from. Well, you I'm a Toronto experience. Was that? Do you have interviewing experience? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, I do. I do. Um, I'm a Torontonian, first and foremost. My background is Trini. Um my parents my mom my mom's from grenada grew up in trinidad um dad's from trinidad but yes casa yes i do have um interviewing experience i do a little podcast and um i do like instagram live so i have some experience but i'm here to learn from the two of you tonight you, to learn to learn from casa <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to learn from casa yeah you got your um you no, know, plug in, plug in the thing. Plug in plug the my thing. thing. I do a lot of things. I wear many hats. Wear my hats. I know. I know you wear many hats. You have the sip, the sip, and chat. Sip and chat. Sip and chat with Jewel. Um, it's now called uh, Sip Events 
Um, so I do events and I do sip and chats with the ladies. We talk about different things that, you know, we don't want men to know about sometimes. Mm. Um, but also I, <laughs> I have uh, my own hair and skin care line called Genoa Naturals. Um, but yeah, I do, I do a few things. Genoa, what does that mean? Genoa means I'm black. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know you what's the what's the what's the Instagram page so everybody knows out there? Genoa. Yeah. It's a J E N O I R underscore is N O I R. Genoa. Okay. Nice. Genoa. Yes, is natural. Sorry. Oh no, what did I say? It's Genoa underscore is natural. Kaza, you messing you messing me up. <laughs> Sorry. Kaza, Kaza, I'm Genoa. J E N O I R underscore is underscore natural all right yes. yeah so while we're waiting for tasha she showed up earlier but i guess she's you know trying to move from one device to the next and mm -hmm. you know so you know the people waiting just so like you know be a little bit more patience and i guess we'll be talking to her very shortly uh the people in the back is trying to make sure that happens too as well i know you guys are looking forward to that um, hope everybody had like a nice, um, a nice holiday. Of course, last week we took the time off. So, you know, some people could do their, you know, holiday thing with New Year's and all that good stuff. So, you know, I believe Tasha is in the building now. So I guess we're going to go ahead and introduce Miss Tasha P. Good night, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy 2020. Yeah what's up what's up what's up i am great yeah. how's everybody doing everybody's good thank you know you. we're chilling you. you you're looking great yeah thank you nice look at that smile <laughs> <laughs> so of course uh tasha you didn't get to meet our our host jules jules this is tasha p tasha p jules hi tasha hi, jules you're and, very pretty, Jules. Oh, thank you. As are you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel it's going to be a long night. <laughs> well, you know what I'm excited about? There's two women on here and there's two men. So you know what? I have a lot of things that I'm stirring up tonight. Even playing ground. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, but I feel abandoned because there's only one man on the screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha, what's going on, girl? How you been? been good been uh hustling like usual i mean it's not as frequent and as consistent as before covid uh the right. pandemic but doing my best to deal with it as it comes and whatever uh happens in the meantime right most definitely how about yeah. you guys everything okay the show has been doing well the show has been doing pretty good um you know are you are you, are you a fan do you, do of you course watch? anything <laughs> novelist does i'm a fan yeah oh, trust. Oh, and okay. anything oh. she does I'm a fan. <laughs> so <laughs> the love is mutual. The last time I saw you, well, previous to um before COVID, you know, um out here in the Toronto area. Uh how has that been like with dealing with this whole pandemic situation? The last time I was in Canada was who three the, years ago. Yeah, the year before before COVID. 2019. That was the last tour with Swinging Stars. That was the last. Yeah, the last with the group since woo, wow. Yeah. So we need yes. you back in Toronto ASAP. Well, I love Toronto actually. I look forward to coming there every time the band travels. I know that's our first stop. So yeah. excitement galore. I love Canada. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we could get that again in the in the future. It might be a little bit different, but hopefully we could get it back. And I mean, of course, of course, I'm looking forward to that. Of course, of course. So. Of course, I got to officially welcome you to Dissect. Um, I know who you are. You know who I am. But for the record of Dissect, let's go all the way back. Wow. <laughs> yeah, all the way back. Um, okay. Let's start with what inspired music. Um. In well, growing up in a household where music was always around everybody especially my father singing and so on but just this the music that my mom would listen to or just 
being on the, on the bus and my dad playing those old school songs, old school CDs or, or cassettes back in the day, um, just listening to people, music, all types of genres, just loving to sing, especially going to church and ministering in singing. Oh my God, music has always been in my blood from the very first day I opened my eyes on this planet. And my mother is the one who revealed that truth to me. You know, it's been a good a good portion of my beginning of time when, when I just came into the into the world. My mom said the doctor was hitting my bottom. You know, they hit those babies so they could cry, get right. all that stuff of the lungs she said i didn't cry i sang I was... <laughs> really wow. and uh, she always thought to herself that i was destined for something musical I, right. I would be growing up and doing my own little shows at home for my parents disney channel was the channel so <laughs> all the groups that would come on to they had concerts every friday or almost like every month mm -hmm. every month and you would have a concert on disney channel so i would learn the songs and see me writing my lyrics with writing what I think I'm hearing, eh? <laughs> not exactly what it is, because sometimes you, you don't know. You think right. you hear one thing, and it's so writing else. the lyrics and teaching my sisters um, the lyrics and giving them different parts, and we'd have a whole concert for my father or the neighbors or whoever. We'd dress alike, just we'd learn dance moves. I was, I feel I have been blessed and destined for music. It's It's not something that just came to me one day, something that I, I, I was born with, something I, I grew up knowing that I wanted to pursue more than anything in the entire world. Right. And I, I, I see now that, you know, uh, you're, well, you've been doing it before, but now more that you, I would say straying away from the Calypso, but you add into the, to the rep, to the, um, how can I say it? You add into your, to your repertoire. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Something that I always wanted to do. I mean, if I have to say, we're going way, way, way back to when. Um, growing up, Calypso was not the first genre in my space. It was not a I want to sing Calypso kind of a genre. Right. Uh, I was never excited about it. And I mean, I'm being brutally honest because that's mm -hmm. what I believe in. I believe in honesty. It uh, right. keeps me out of trouble. And even if I do get <laughs> in trouble, at least the truth was told. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up it was never calypso for me it wasn't calypso until my younger sister started singing and i used to do backups for her because i love harmonies i, mm -hmm. I love putting those little parts and on stage with her doing it and so on but never did i think that i would have some calypso and then when i was 11 years old in primary school my um my grade seven teacher at the time, Mrs. Morrow, who's now the principal of the St. Martin Primary School, mm -hmm. along with Miss, Mrs. Christian and one other teacher, Mrs. Mrs. Reed. Oh, Miss Reed. Who? Everybody has to know about Miss Reed. Because mm -hmm. when I would be singing in assembly, little, little girl singing, making noise, she would say, let the child sing tan. Because that. But you can shout Papa. God, trust me. Um, so... It was always, uh, yeah, when I was 11, they made me, they asked me to take part in the Junior Calypso Monarch show. And I was like, Miss Calypso, I don't do sing that. Right. And she <laughs> said, no, no, no. Um, you never know, you can try it and maybe you might like it. Right. So I decided, okay, yes, Miss, no problem. I have to admit at that time, the support was null to almost void. On, mm -hmm. on the people, the, the side where you expect to get the support sometimes, you know, I didn't get it then, mm -hmm. but my teachers were, let me tell you, they were, they knew what I did not know. So they right. decided to ask me to take part. They got me a song from Ian Jackson called Together As One, a song I up till today know every single word. I cannot forget that song. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I sang it. I was nervous. I have a video of a recording of that. I I am I cannot wait to repost it on my on my social media um, platforms. But right. oh, was, I don't know if it's embarrassing because it's not really embarrassing because I'm 11 years old. You know what do you know much about the stage? Yeah. And it's your first time, and you have all those butterflies in your stomach and so on. Man, it was an experience of a lifetime. Eh? I didn't want to sing, and my teachers were, "Let's go, you could do this." And then my younger sister, who was only five at the time. She took part. Oh, that right. made me more nervous because she was brave. She was a brave heart from day one. Confidence spurring. And I'm like, how am I going to do that? And she doing that so easily. And eventually my turn came. 
at number 15, that means the whole night passed and I seen everybody performing and that made it, made me even more nervous. Right. I went on and I took part. <laughs> I forgot the first two words of my first verse because guess what? Oh. There was this cute boy in the crowd that I had a crush on. <laughs> <laughs> so when he came to the front of it, I was like, okay, oh my God, he's here. <laughs> and forgot the first two, three words uh, um, of my um, verse, but I jumped right into it. And if you see that video, oh my God, you would be very surprised. Very. So that's kind of where the Calypso vibe started for me at 11. But that was mm -hmm. the only time I ever took part in the Junior Calypso Monarch. Okay. But yes. yes Love we... you too, Adorai Breedy. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need to see that. We need to see that video. You need to. You need oh to my God. <laughs> yeah. So coming soon. I will make sure I post it on my media platforms and share it so you guys can have a look at 11 year old Tasha. And at the time I was singing Tasha. Oh. Singing Tasha, me and oh, I don't know what <laughs> what name to give myself then. So I think it was singing Tasha. Yeah, I'm waiting for that video to come up too because I went and I binge watch all of your videos. I was like stalking you. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> but she's, she's I'm excited. doing the homework. <laughs> but, yeah, I did my homework. I definitely oh, did my homework. homework. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but so. All that you did not want to sing Calypso, and mm -mm. you are now the Calypso Queen of Dominica, the only Calypso Queen of Dominica, right? Like in only history. Calypso female monarch. Female monarch. monarch, right? There are other queens because usually sometimes we have the female show where only females perform, just right. like in a stardom tent or so on, and then a winner emerges for the females, but then. With the big in the big leagues, there's a monarch competition where a female has never won before, and oh, then I yeah. I got that only in 54 years. Yes, I you did do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> My homework, I told you. Yes, yes, she's right. Yes, Is 54 she? years. I I feel I feel ashamed, and I like I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Yes. Okay. Oh, you, I see another gentleman has joined you, so you don't feel left out, left out again, do you? Yeah, he he, he shows up once in a while when he feels like <laughs> Jack in Jack in Jack in feel. <laughs> oh, can feel massive. <laughs> one love, one love, a lot of technical love, workings and hopping in and out, you know, keeping the vibes going and afloat for sure. Enjoying the conversation for sure. Your story, um, <laughs> coming from church, yeah, it's very interesting, you know. I have a question. Remind me, remind me of my uncle like this for sure. Came from a wedding, then church, then here, and then I have studio after. Oh wow! Oh wow! Good job. Busy, busy. Well, you mentioned that you're the first Calypso mo female monarch. Yes. What is that? I mean, that must be a heavy load for you as a female to be almost like a role model or a voice for the Caribbean on a whole. How does that feel? Like, what does it do for you? Like, how is it feeling for you to hold that title and know that so many young women look up to you, young and old women, any any age, they look up to you because you have this title now? Well, to be honest with you, it's a, a ball of mixed feelings uh, in regards to that. When it first happened, it was a very bad experience. Um, even for the role, playing the role and then having other people look up to you was having people look down on you. Mm -hmm. It was something new. And I know a lot of times um, if the world does not know something, they're afraid of it because it's unknown. Right. So they kind of have to get to know what it's like. Being the first is hard and it's good and it's bad. Mm -hmm. Being the first means you set a certain trend, you set a pace, you, you, you start off the ball rolling. And other people can either do better or work they like work really hard to get there. But in terms of being a role model and carrying the title, it is both a heavy load and a blessing. I say it's a heavy load because again, being the first means you have um you have no standard to meet. You have no 
pattern to follow. You have no template as to how to be the female monarch of Dominica. You have no guidelines to improve that. This is how it was done before, and this is how you could do it now that you are in the position. There's no, there's no chain of command. There's no, you know. I think I, I hope you guys understand what I'm yes, saying. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But at the same time, on the on the contrary, um, you're the first. So you set the pace, you make the rules, you set the guidelines, mm -hmm. you start it off, and everybody else can take it off from there. The trendsetter. <laughs> right, right. So it's like a Pisces. No, not a Pisces, sorry, a Libra. A Libra. It, it's yeah. yeah. Yes. It has, the, I think it's 50 50 both ways. It goes, it's good. And it can be bad if you're not if you're not strong, right. if yes. you're not uh, if you don't have the proper support system. And I I will always be an advocate for support because it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. If you get into any position, sometimes it's just that you're maybe the first manager of a business or first time being a principal of a primary school or high school, first time being in any position, the PM, the president, first time. Everything is going to come to you overwhelmingly. It's going to come like a big rush in the very beginning. It's a high, uh, a, mm. a serious, serious high. And mm. at that time, it was a serious calypso high for me. Right. I didn't expect it. I did not see it coming. And then when I received it, I now had to put myself in order, straighten up my jacket collar, mm. and ensure that whatever it is I was putting out there, that it was something that positive and have a good influence over the people who saw me as a role model or as you said look up to me yeah dominica caribbean wide or nation nationally sorry regionally anywhere so mm -hmm. i just had to ban my waist and let's go that's basically how it was in the very beginning no so definitely made you a, a stronger yeah. person Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. <laughs> I believe so, indeed. <laughs> Trust me, some of the things that I had to go through, some of the statements that were made, some of the articles that were written in the newspaper about me, mm -hmm. whew, I had to have, and I say, you can be strong, but if you don't have support or you don't have people there to catch you if you're about to fall, yeah. yes, you'll leave those people position for them. Yeah, please. And, and Dominica, <laughs> yeah. Dominica is not an easy load. <laughs> and Dominicans, straight up. They tell you like it is. Imagine yep. being on stage singing, you in yep. finals, and let me tell you, you pumped you on stage, you're ready to perform your best, and you see somebody under this stage in front of you doing that. Eh. Hmm. Wow. It's really crazy. Dominicans don't have, they don't have any, they don't put water in their wine, they have. <laughs> <laughs> Plain talk they are weak, no. They straight up. If it's yep. good, they'll tell you it's good. If yep. it's bad, yep. they'll tell yep. you it's bad. Yep. That's wow. all yep. <laughs> But I love them for it though, because at least you of get course. the honesty. You get the yeah. honest part of it. Yeah. The criticism may be harsh, but it's thorough, and it right. also helps with, with, with withering out all the old weeds. So you take off all the bad, and you make what you have mm -hmm. very, very good. If you listen, you just have to listen. Right. So, how many years were you in uh, Calypso before you actually won the monarch? One. One year. So I I started in 2010, mm -hmm. and I won in 2011. That's crazy. So it was oh. my second year. That is crazy. What do you and see yourself in the in the business in the next five years from now? In Calypso. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that no one has ever asked me that question before. And, and maybe, <laughs> not just, maybe not just even in Calypso. Like, do you see yourself? expanding outside the bound of? Of course, of in this Zoom. day and age. You can't afford to stay in the same place. Change is a must. Growth is a must. Development is necessary. And taking risks, I can almost say is necessary as well. Because at the, in, as I said in the beginning, I didn't want to sing Calypso. I, when it was brought to my attention, I, you know, they told me, Tasha, but let's, you should sing Calypso. I said, Calypso. No, 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 no. I don't think all the story for the Calypso <laughs> thing. I know that. That is for old people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was 21 years old. So, in my head, now I'm not know what I can do in that. I yeah. straight up, you know. <laughs> but then, uh, thank God for the Swinging Stars band because I had already joined the band uh, that same year, 2009. I joined the band, so okay. they were the ones who kind of push it, more. targeted me. No, I won't say target, but they kind of just asked me to try it out, and I said, right. try it. So they say, okay, if you don't like it, you have to do it again. Yeah. Try it once. Try it once. I say, boy. 
okay, why not? I had the support of the band. I had the support of my family. My mother mm -hmm. ensured that I joined that band because, again, everything cool. that's new and big was uh, frightening for me. So it was hard for me to just make the decision to do it. I needed that support, that, right. that you know, that yeah. good positive networking in my background and my, my family, my mom, my siblings, uh, my very close friends, the Swinging Stars Band and the Six Form Sister Singers, of which I was a part of for 13 years. They all helped me to build the confidence to try it. And uh, I sang in 2010. Right. Little girl, well, they say is little girl in big man thing. Mm. And it was crazy. Like when every time I look back at myself performing that first year, I'm like, what were you doing? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> You know, but then uh, every year you just watch yourself, you watch your growth. And then the yeah. second year, I think that was maybe the second toughest year. At the time, it was the toughest year of my life. 2011 was rough, 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 yeah. rough, rough. All them fellas watching your court eye, people yeah. in the competition, all feisty. And I don't know, but boy, it was crazy. The negativity was intense, intense. And I oh. thought, you know what? I'm going to do this just because I love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, I'm good. I know I wasn't going to win. That's to me. Eh? And right. then, <laughs> I just say, you know what? You're not going to win. You know you're a female already, and that's the first one. Plus, you're right. young. You know, it's not leave it alone. You just start singing, leave it alone. I went and I sang, and three days before the competition, I actually lost my voice. Oh, wow. So oh, wow. everybody was kind of like, you know, all my fans at the time, they were like on the edge of their seats. Oh. It's like, oh, my God, last interview, she won the female she won the Calypso female, the Calypso queen at Stardom. But when she came to do the radio interview, there was nothing. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, <laughs> bless her soul, Samantha, Dr. Vleta, who was my chaperone at the time and still mm -hmm. always is, no matter what I do, she's always in my in the back, just, you know, helping me. She gave me a writing pad and a pen, and she told me, no more talking till Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if anybody speaks to you, write it, you turn moo moo. You already kind of talk, leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did for three days. Um right. Thursday, Friday into Saturday, no talking. When I had to rehearse, I just had to pretend mm. like um lip sync. Lip sync, okay. And on the night, Sammy and I and my mom and my family, you know, we prayed backstage and we said, no matter what happens, we're gonna do our best out there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's scared because Tasha has no voice. Mm -hmm. And then I walked onto the stage and I, I just opened my mouth and voice came out. Wow. So I think that's one of the reasons I was very emotional for the first song, which was right. children. But in addition to that, the, the whole overwhelming feeling, you know, the, again, the negative, the negative was coming in really heavy, but competition is a, a tough thing, you know, Most definitely. if you don't have support, as I said, yep. yeah. So. that was the grooming process that was the grooming process to bring you to where you're at right now and where yes, good. To, you know <laughs> so that's amazing so how how has the experience with swinging stars been though like you know Ooh. um swinging stars saved my life i put it that way okay i said save my that? life <laughs> what do you mean by that <laughs> well <laughs> what do you mean uh, at the time when I was asked to join the band, mm -hmm. I was in a little band called Esclave. Okay, yeah, I remember Esclave, yes. Right, so that's yeah. Pusky and Median, DJ Fal well, Falcon, sorry, Falcon, um, yeah. Poco Killer. Yeah. And uh, I was young, let's just put it that way. I was mm. young. So me not, um, me not getting the opportunity to sing with Swinging Stars opened my eyes to a whole new world and it was crazy because it wasn't just about singing anymore right. i mean it was just, it was singing but it was as a, it was growth it was it was a, a a love a family a set of people a group of people who came together to play music because they loved it not because they tried i mean obviously everything is money you play somewhere you get paid right but it wasn't all about the money and it wasn't all about the glitz and glams it helped to the band the, the camaraderie ship band also helped to shape me, shape my perspective because you're young, you're a female, things happen and you know, you maybe react the wrong way or maybe your humility is not on par. Mm -hmm. 
but trust me, that band helped to shape me. I mean, I joined the band at 20. Right. Um, I was 20 when I joined the band, yes, February 22nd. That means my anniversary is coming up soon. Um, so I was young, I was uh, immature, you know, a little naive to a lot of things. Right. And I just figured I can sing, but it wasn't all about singing. It was about performance, um, discipline, humility, um, consideration for the fact that it wasn't just you. So teamwork, learning to work with mature people because they could all be like my, my parents and grandparents. Mm. So at right. the time, it was I was the baby in the band and as the only female, oh, they took really good care of me. Um, they didn't spoil me or, sorry, they didn't spoil me and they didn't feed me like with a gold spoon. They were rough when they had to be rough, tough when they had to be tough. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, currently, one of the band members who say, but Tasha, when you joined the band, you couldn't even sing. Right. So, <laughs> I think what they're trying to say is I be I could maybe sing and hold my notes and do all my vary, right. but in terms of the voice growing and learning mm -hmm. to be a performer, being an artist, that took some time. It took some some nurturing. Right. And it took me from that young girl who sang nicely to this young woman who knows how to manage herself on stage, yeah. dress right. well, sing well, know how to entertain, know how to be on stage and off stage, know how to speak to people. It was like a mm -hmm. whole combination of a lot of things. So it was like a life shaping moment for me in the music industry. So it was it wasn't just joining the band. It was I get I gained big brothers and uncles and uncle being uncle Philip. Right. Everybody was uncle except those that were somewhat my age. <laughs> <laughs> so they would kind of say, so why not calling me Uncle Chester or Uncle Peter? I say, um mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> and being the only female, as I said, yes, they were rough and tough when they had to be, but they protected me. Um, they right. taught me a lot about the musical, the music, sorry, industry. They taught me how to deal with certain situations. Mm -hmm. So, again, as a female, you finish performing on stage and, you know, all those guys may be half drunk or they just want to come and talk to you or touch you up and whatever. In the beginning, you should have seen this feisty little make person. Me? <laughs> 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 when they come in by you, they want to slap this and touch this. Mm -hmm. One day, I almost knocked one to the ground for good. He wow. was just passing and he smacked my booty, my butt. Wow. And I got pissed. So my hand was already ready to finish him. And I just felt, <laughs> I just felt myself move. Yeah. The band members, they saw what happened. But again, wanted to protect me because if I had hit the man and the man is a lot bigger than me, he maybe would have bust my tail. Right. <laughs> so they had to, that was the first, that was the first time that happened. So they kind of just pulled me aside and told me how, how to manage myself when things like that come up or how mm. to prevent myself from getting into situations like that so a whole family of big brothers and daddies and grandfathers just uh cuddling me but in the most strict way so it wasn't right. that i could do what i want or i figure i can no everything was a learning process if you did something that the band members thought they didn't you did they, did, they didn't think it was good or mm -hmm would look for you, they would tell you. If I would dress a certain way and they say, oh, Tasha, not that outfit or something. You know, they really help to curb the personality on stage that you see today. Right. They pay, They have been playing a major, major role in my life and it's been 12 years and will be 13 in a month. So is that where a lot of the inspiration comes from, where you're in your lyrics and your writing? Because I listened intently <laughs> to every word that you said in your songs um is that where a lot of the inspiration comes from it just i'll say some of it definitely mm -hmm. definitely uh if you've never experienced something you don't know how to talk about it or how yeah. to feel about it so joining the band was another aspect of my life that mm -hmm. shaped me and really gave me like it just open open a, a gave me insight mm -hmm. to life on a different tangent so the six one series singers definitely because it as a it helped me to be a choral singer to know my volume my balance just i wouldn't say train it, it's not coaching it's not vocal coaching but again the discipline uh the vocal runs and the riffs and how to sing mm. soft and how to sing loudly and how to auntie pearl may her soul <laughs> continuously be blessed for uh, taking up that mantle and shaping us young female artists and male artists in Dominica. But all of that helped to shape me. So this is from Cicero Singers did their way. 
the swinging stars band still today is doing the same helping to shape right. me and kill me especially when it comes to my lyrics i almost can say that i didn't really like writing before mm. um Sometimes, you know, I get writer's block a lot. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm not inspired. Right. But whenever I do feel inspired, the first place I want to come is the studio, which I am in right now. So I come to the studio. It's like my home away from home. It's my comfort place. Nice. Um, this place to be. Even if I'm pissed off or even if I am at my lowest, if I come here, it's like I, as soon as I open the door, it's like Alice in Wonderland. It just changes. It transforms me and my mind and puts me at peace. And, you know, this is the place I love being the most. <laughs> it's, the, it's the best place to be when you're pissed off, actually. You really, you know, all that old energy into like a song or, you know, production right. or whatever. You know what I mean? Excellent. You are right. Yeah. And music, I always like to take from different angles. So if I do intend to write something, the band members for sure, Peter, Chester, we come to the studio, we fix it up, we edit it, and then right. we have a production. So it's never really, the band is a family. It's never yeah. really, I did this or you did that. It's, mm -hmm. We did this together as a team, and Peter has been the producer and arranger for years, and he's been doing such a great job. That, uh, oh, Peter. <laughs> you make me laugh. How are you working with Peter? Forget, like, not, not forget about Pardon? the band, but let's exclude the band for a minute. <laughs> How is it working with Peter? Because I know Mr. Okay. Peter, and I don't think I would be able to work with Peter, not in a negative way. I don't think we'll be able to get any work done. Why? You because laugh Peter would probably have me laughing from the minute <laughs> we sit down and just wait, waste hours. <laughs> I well, tried Peter to is a darling. Peter mm -hmm. and I couldn't ask Peter <laughs> questions. We were just we were just laughing on the radio. <laughs> so how is it? I remember that it? interview. You remember that interview? <laughs> All I could do is laugh around Peter. So how I is think it he knows with? how to separate business from pleasure. Right. Um, he also knows how to calm you because a lot of people come to the studio, including myself, and Maybe they're nervous about their lyrics or maybe they're not too confident about what they're singing and or maybe they would come with, you know, some people uh, go through things. We go through things and then we come with that whole mindset of what we're going through. We're at a low place. We've been right. um, like we have so much on our plate. We have to be overthinking. We're stressed out. Now, if you come to this studio, Peter... He would, I don't know how he does it. I think he's natural at it. It's a natural thing for him yeah. where he would just maybe change the topic and get you to talk about something else. And before you know it, your teeth outside. Wow. <laughs> so he helps to calm you in that regard. So you are right that he will have you laughing, yep. but laughing for a good cause because then yeah. when you're ready to record, you on par, you're good to go. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely. Very easy to work with. That's maybe the easiest producer I've ever worked in my entire life. And I've worked with a few uh, in Trinidad, a few from Barbados and you know other places and... This is the cameras, and not because that's like my big brother from another mother, but to be honest, you come here and you are the best. As soon as you step inside, you are the best. Nobody's better than you. And it's a concept I think he and the band kind of just kind of put in my mind. Whenever you reach on stage, stop thinking about everybody else. Think sure. about what you want to put out there, what kind of performance you want to give, and that's your best. So once you step in the studio, novelist, Peter mm -hmm. will make you feel like you're the best. He will tell you <laughs> what you need to hear, what you nice. need to know. And when you come in from that mic, you do exactly that. And as I'm talking about him, so he steps into the we studio. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> can, we, can, we get it, can we get him to come in for two minutes? I and say it you, like you, you, you want to bring Peter, <laughs> you want to bring Peter <laughs> on the screen, that's his problem. <laughs> um, the group Miss, novelist, they want to see your face. Mr. Later. Oh, maybe a minute. I'm Mr. Later. Mr. Later. <laughs> Look, <you> just... <laughs> yes, sir. <I>. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? <laughs> I good man. I good. I, I, I just want to know. I I can't stay to talk now. All right. Yeah, yeah. Do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. We, we yeah, have to right, trouble you right. for a few seconds. <laughs> all right. So you mentioned um working with producers in like Trinidad. Yes. Oh. Um, very few opportunities came by whilst I was studying in Trinidad because I studied in Trinidad for four years. Right. And my writer, Gina Later, that's Peter's sister. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the one who wrote Children, uh, uh, Justice, 
but there's so many songs I've sung. I have to try to remember all those songs now. But yeah, so Gina at the time lived in Trinidad as well. So she had a few songs that she had written and she mm -hmm. wanted me to record them before I went back to Dominica. So I have some demos and also for her own personal uh, writing. So she, I did demos for some other songs for other artists that she wrote for. Right. She wrote for. So in that regard, or as a result, I ended up having to go to maybe two or three studios over there. I only remember one person's name. Right. The other two, it wasn't very, it wasn't a very long back and forth in the studio, but I remember ZZ from Trinidad. He recorded uh one or two of the songs that the band has recently or currently. Yeah. So I got a chance to work with ZZ. I got a chance to work with two others. And I think they're prominent um, arrangers and producers because they've worked with other soca artists like Marshall Montano and Matrice mm -hmm. and all of them. So a little opportunity came where I was able to work with them in that regard. Okay. So, Jules, I don't know if you want to go ahead. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I have training background. No, 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 no. I, just, I, I just love figure you want to jump in the question. My home country. I love Trinidad. My best friend is Trinidadian. Nice. Uh, <laughs> see, I wanted to know how you were able to come about doing that that um song with Marshall that night. And, and apparently you wrote part, a little bit of the lyrics. Just the part song. I sang. Okay. Um, How did that come about? That's an interesting, interesting question. Yeah. Uh, I went to UWE. I met this guy. Well, I'm, I had a friend who knew this guy who was a producer from St. Vincent doing his master's. And he wanted uh, somebody to come and do the demo or the female demo for Destro's part in the song. Uh, mm -hmm. Come back to me. And at the time, when I came to the studio, I thought he already had written everything. And he just wanted me to use, he just wanted to use my voice. But when I came, he didn't have anything for Destras yet. He just had the male, the male lyrics. Yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. And I just sat there. I took a piece of paper and a pen and I started feeling out what the lyrics meant and what he wanted it to mean. Mm -hmm. And I just started writing and I wrote it. It didn't take us half an hour. No? I wrote it. He didn't like a word. He changed it. And then he said, okay. Let's do the demo. So I did the demo, but just before I, you know, I have to call my confidants in Dominica and say, you know, this is what's happening. What should I do? <laughs> so I called them and they said, you know what? Do the demo like it's your song. You have to do it well. So even if it's just a demo for somebody else, that voice, you know, they will hear. Yeah. I did the demo, I did the back and everything. And uh, before I knew it, I left Trinidad in December for holidays, Christmas holidays. And by the beginning of January, the song was out. Um, but in the credits, uh, my name wasn't there. Hmm. So I was like, you know what? It's okay. That's cool. Because it was, remember, I'm not home. I'm in Trinidad. That's not really, you know, my space. And I don't want to cause any drama. Hmm. Well, so this I just is dissect. So, so we can't I get into this drama. Happen. Happen. What? No, no, no. You should have gotten your accolades. <laughs> I didn't. But... You know, young yeah. and again, as I said, I'm not a person who likes conflict. I yeah. prefer not have to deal with the drama of people. And I already pissed myself to create a very good reputation for myself. So putting yourself in that, then they will take you to court. Then they all have, I don't have that money. I, I was a yeah. student at UE and I just wanted to be a student. So I just let it go. I was like, hey, okay, well, if you don't want me or don't want to give me, that's fine. Wow. And that was in 2017. No, that's the performance, but the song was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do nice. that's like, you know homework down here. <laughs> the, song <was> <laughs> the song was written in 2014, I think. Oh wow! Yeah, 2014, okay. or something like that. And I let it go. So I was, I moved on. I lived my life, but I love that song. I love this song for what it was, and I would always listen to it. So when Hurricane Maria happened, um. Mm -hmm. You know, Dominica lost everything. Everybody was in shambles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, sad to say, my best friend from Trinidad, Janine Simon, her brother passed away, and I I couldn't be in Dominica. I mean, at the time in Dominica, there was nothing to do. There's no light, no water, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Just have to wait. So I found myself in Trinidad to support my best friend because I needed to be there for her. Okay. And I got a lot of support from my friends to bring to her. 
So that was the reason why I ended up in Trinidad around, around that time in October okay. of 2017. <clears throat> so I stayed with her for about a month. And whilst I was there, they were doing a, a concert, a Dominica Strong concert to raise funds and to get um, foods and goods for Dominica. Mm-hmm. To respond. So I, I said, okay, did I got a, Gina had a friend who was doing a radio program, but it was a live, like a TV show. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to interview any Dominicans who came to Trinidad as a result of Maria to get their experience. Right. So uh, fortunately for me, I was in Trinidad. So Gina called me and said, let's go. I know this person who doing this interview and she wants to interview any Dominican who is in Trinidad and experienced the hurricane Mm. so that's why i got my first interview um with uh her name is oh my god why am i not remembering her name right now her name is natasha so i went on the show and i we did that it was very very emotional for not just me but all the dominicans who got the opportunity to give their story right and it brought me to a lot of tears and yeah while i was giving the story i saw the cast and crew crying and it was just so touching and then as soon as we were done, she said, you know what? I think I'm going to try to get you to perform with one of the artists as a Dominican representative. I think I was the only Dominican artist in Trinidad at the time. And they wanted to right. put me on stage, somebody to represent Dominica as a result. Yeah. So she said she's going to try to get me to perform with Kes. Everybody knows Kes the band. Kes right. is a big soca artist, very, very talented. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your girl was a little super excited but i decided not to show my excitement because i figured you know she may be just saying that (laughs) but then she asked me for my email she asked me for some other information about me where to find me where i live etc etc when am i leaving i gave her everything i didn't hear from her for another week and i was like i forgot about it it's whatever Hmm. then i got a phone call i just i was putting braids at the time my my best friend's cousin was putting braids in my hair and she, I, I got the call. I was halfway done, mm-hmm. and I have a big, head, so it's a lot of hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the call said, "Where are you, Miss Pelty?" I said, "Well, I am home braiding my hair." Uh, the person said, "Well, you need to get to Queens Park, ASAP, like wow. right now." So I said, "Excuse me." She said, "Yes." <laughs> um, Marshall just landed and he's coming for a song check and a rehearsal, and he would like you to rehearse with him. I said, "What?" <laughs> Hmm. And I thought you again thought she was joking, and she okay. said, "No, Miss Pelte, get your butt to Queens Park as soon as you can." Wow. If you can. Wow. <laughs> so my hair was almost finished, or was it finished? Almost, like I just had maybe the little top, so I just tied it, hmm. and I had it was about an hour drive because I was very far. So my best friend's father and her brother-in-law dropped me to the Savannah, oh, cool. and. I waited for Marshall for a little while, but I was like, why am I performing with Marshall? Isn't it supposed to be Kes? Right. So, so wait, then, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So he came, he called my name, I ran on stage, I rehearsed, I was very nervous. Wow. But I had to be professional. Yeah, yeah. And then he told the band the same story I gave you about me writing the verse for Destro, but I did not know that he knew that I wrote that first because I didn't get any oh. credit for it. Right. Okay. But anyways, he did his research too. Ah. And found that out and told the band that we're going to do a little piece of that song because we had a, we had a whole 20 minutes to perform two, one of his songs as well as that piece right. of that song. Ah, so I rehearsed with him and then I went to I went to stay by the same new the journalist I had the conversation, the interview with about mm-hmm. Maria. So I'm going to stay by her for the night into the next morning because the show was the next day. Whilst we just arriving into her parking lot area, I'm seeing Marshall and his team coming to her home mm-hmm. so we had so you know i had to run to my room and call who I had to call and say hello all you marshall in the room over there what do, I do? <laughs> do i go outside too do i talk to him what do do we talk about the show i i you know you can i could feel the adrenaline but right. then you know he asked for me and then he wanted to have a conversation and he said that he was very very touched by my interview about hurricane maria and he would like to play a piece of it after edit after the editing Mm. For the show, and then I will come on to I'll come onto the stage, and we will do a little segment. Um, so I was like, okay, we had tea, and he spoke to me about my whole childhood. Who's my mother? Who's my father? How does wow. Marshall know all of that? 
beats me. So, so, he did so we had a nice conversation. So so he beat he beat uh Jules to the to the thing. He did his No, I think Jules beat him me tonight. <laughs> 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 so it was it was well, it was a nice, simple evening. It was very like toned down, and then he right. left. I got up the next morning and I had to go and look for an outfit. That was my outfit that I wore. That particular night was sponsored by Marshall Montano. Nice. Um, like he just wanted to make sure that I had everything that I needed because I didn't travel with clothes to perform or anything like that. So he just sponsored um, what I was wearing. Oh. And then the night came. And let me tell you drama because some of the artists before his performance, they stayed too long on stage. So he almost could not perform his entire his entire um, repertoire. Yeah. So time to end the show, and I haven't come on as yet. But Marshall said, "Police, please. I know we're supposed to end, but I really, really, really have to do this." And then he played the video on the big screen at the back. And as soon as it was over, he called me on stage. So we only had time to do that little piece of that yeah. song. Hey, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. So he said, just come on, let's just do that little piece. I just came on and I just fo I just went to the flow because that's not what we practice. We were supposed to be a song and then that. Right. But I just went to the flow. Of course. So, and that's not even how we practiced it either. It just kind of happened how it happened. Well, you're a professional. I like how he, he mentioned that you wrote that part. That's the only way I knew that you wrote that part is because he mentioned you it wrote was this very part. scary. Be someone else, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he got he got his he have his sources, so he found out, and then he just decided, right. you know, that's a good opportunity to put that out there. Absolutely. So, and then the show ended, and you know, he promised a few things. We had a nice conversation, and he said, you know what, I'll be in Antigua tomorrow. We want you to perform with us tomorrow in right. Antigua. So they bought me a ticket. I had to leave two days before. I had to leave that the day after that to go home. So I just mm -hmm. had to get a new ticket. They changed my ticket. I oh, that's crazy. Immediately, I just have to go home, pack my stuff. Right. Yeah, what? And they called me like three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning. I was, I, I, I thought I could just sleep. <laughs> and I couldn't sleep. It's just get up, let us go. Meet us at the airport. Somebody will be there to attend to you. Yeah. Meet us in Antigua. Boy, it was crazy. And yeah. then I got to Antigua the night. And then I end up back on stage with him to do the same thing mm -hmm. um, along with Destra. So I was, she was actually on stage with the Fruity Tour. So that nice. was another exciting moment for me. Nice. and uh, oh that's crazy it was really really crazy but exciting and i felt so proud to be a dominican so proud to have had the opportunity no matter how small it was to represent for dominica it was it was fabulous to be amazing. in his presence as well as destra and some other artists backstage mm -hmm. it was amazing for me and a proud moment to be dominican i i loved it i loved every moment of it nice I, I want to ask, um, I want to ask this, uh, uh, my favorite song. Well, one of my favorite songs, but actually it, it <laughs> might be my top Tasha P favorite song. Which Treadmill. one? Treadmill. Oh. Yo. I remember, oh. I'll be honest with you, T. When that song came out, there was only two songs I wanted to hear. Uh, Enjoy My Life by Sora. Oh. I mean that. That is my boy. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so is everybody boy. <laughs> no, that, no, I don't know about everybody, right? But Sawa is my boy. Like, um, but <laughs> that song treadmill. Mm -hmm. And I watched, well, I was um, unfortunately I wasn't in Dominica, so I watched it on the internet. Right, right, right. I was very disappointed in the judges' decisions, but <sighs> that's just my opinion. Yes, of course. So yeah, that song. Please, can we talk about that song? Oh, yes, we can. I thought you were going to ask her to perform it, to do ah. a little, give us a little something. <laughs> if I do that, you'll not be able to see the whole of me on that computer because I'll be all over the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little solo something, something, just to... Of in, in, the, in the comment section, can we get some fire emojis if we want right. Tasha to give us a little something, something on this Saturday right. evening? Because it's so warm in Canada right now. We just need something. <laughs> it's so warm in Canada, right? Yeah, mm. we did. <laughs> but so while, so while we wait, while we wait for the people to put their fire emojis, mm -hmm. yes, let's let's talk about treadmill because that is my tune. Um, who wrote that song? Peter later. Boy, yeah. Damn. 
How did that song come about? Uh, I guess you have to ask Peter that. Peter has, <laughs> he has his moments, like he would just be sitting down somewhere and he, a, a, pro, a concept will come to mind. Right. Like the concept for He's a Boy was his concept. He had the concept and then he kind of gave it to a writer to finish off for Ian Jackson. But he has oh. a lot of very, very good concepts. And sometimes he, as soon as he thinks of it, he puts it down. And he goes, Asho, come and listen to that. So I'll listen. Sometimes I feel... What he writes is not it, like it, it, there's a specific person you can tell who can sing whatever the songs are based yeah. on what they are. Right. So the very beginning, and I start giving the story about treadmill, is inside the comments are crazy he coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, yes, all the fire they want it now. You, you'll, oh, be singing, you'll, you'll be singing your way out. They really want you to finish talking. They want you to perform it. <laughs> Perform. Okay. Give us the story. Give us the story. For sure. Okay. You get that job you wanted so badly. Your equipped education and personality. In the future, you see upward mobility. Dun, dun, dun. Early to work and late to live. Doing what it takes. To succeed, but promotion is for backbiters and the party supporters. Whoa, oh, oh, you're disappointed, yet still committed. <clears throat> Hoping one day you will get promoted. Here we go, like you want a treadmill. Putting all the effort. Giving all the time, but you have to stand still. You am moving whoa, oh, oh, on a treadmill. Whoa. Your legs are moving, your body's working, but you have to stand still. You are going nowhere. They should tell you early. They don't want you. They don't need you, or they prefer somebody else. <laughs> no, you guys have to put yes. the top emoji for Tasha P. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> nice. Thank so you. let's get back into Welcome. our story. <laughs> yes. So Trembly was written because Peter came up with the concept about, you know, that song maybe could have had 10 verses uh, in a lot of different aspects of life. People feel like they're just not moving. You know, like sometimes you're working in whatever system. I like use the government system, for example. Um, some young people really have the potential to act and to work in certain positions. But because the older folks don't want to retire or maybe don't want to give up their posts and so on, it's preventing growth or movement in the whole uh, chain of command or in the whole organization. Right. So just using that as a random example. So a lot of people are deprived of an opportunity to showcase what they can do because the older folks don't want to let go or they don't want to carry the, carry on or pass on, sorry, the battle. Right. So that's one example. Or like in Calypso, a lot of people talk about Calypso being one of the... Um, one of it, I should have written a verse about that, but we just kept it as artists. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, a lot of the foreign artists get called in to perform for World Music Festival and so many other shows like uh, Soca Fest and all these other things that we have here in Dominica. And they get paid well, they get the contracts, um, they get boosted, they get promoted, marketed, etc. And the Dominican artists are just kept on the sidelines and there's no movement for us yeah. or no growth or no movement. Like we just not going anywhere you're not going nowhere so basically tell you you're not good and you're not going to move anywhere instead of just having you there waiting 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 on a treadmill yeah so because if you think about a treadmill you're actually not really moving yes yeah. your body everything is moving yeah. but you're just you're at anywhere. one yeah. position for the entire yeah. time and so peter came up with the concept and i was like uh, i don't know if that song is for me Right. And I think if he has to give this story, he'll say, Tasha didn't like this song when I get to it. But, yeah. um, you know, sometimes whenever you get a song, it's not exactly the end product. Because yeah. sometimes you get a song and you, as the artist who is chosen or who 
who chooses the song, mm -hmm. you put your own personality into it. That's true. The so treadmill was a the melody was very different. Right. Uh, the lyrics would but we kind of edited and changed it up. The style of singing it, mm -hmm. yeah. Everything I had to put myself, I had to make this song me, make it part of who I am and how I would want to pass that message to people. Right. I was very skeptical because it was not the norm of like again, as I say, changes are must, and sometimes taking a risk is uh, scary. Mm -hmm. But I tried. I right. did it nonetheless. I decided, you know what? Okay, let's go with it. I trust my team. And when they pick this song, I usually I don't fight. Sometimes I fight when I feel I really don't want to sing a song. Right. But I like getting their perspective because they, they on the outside can see what my potential might be with a particular song. So okay. treadmill, I said, okay, let's give this a try. The first time I sang it, oh, I mixed up this song all over the place. I maybe start three, four times because I was so nervous at Stardom. It was right. crazy. Stardom tent, um, which is a tent that I sing at. Um, but then I, 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 the, the feedback was, I don't know, the feedback wasn't good in the very beginning from people. Very few people mm -hmm. had that, had the novelist mindset of how they love the song and they glad I did it and it was good. Some people would tell me, but Tasha P, what is that? You know, that you come in and sing because I'm usually a lyricist. So I sing songs with meaning and deep, they yeah. deep and a lot of words and it is i mean all my songs have messages and mm -hmm. they're long or they're very detailed but treadmill like he's a boy and woman time and all those other hits they they were not as proper proper meaning like i would say they shouldn't tell you early they don't want they don't want you they don't need you but i said they should tell you early they don't want you they don't need you i yeah. put the dominican dialect into as as it was right. in there and that was what was scaring me because i was like oh my god my fans are going and say how oh, i just i just dropped from my standards and it was right. oh, because I said, relax but try the thing you never know and then i tried it and it just kept doing this every yeah. week Every week it would just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the demand for it has not it has not paused even today. Hmm. Well, so been... yeah, go ahead. I'll be honest, like, well, hence novelist the the name, right? Lyrics. Yes. So when I heard treadmill, is something that, first of all the title treadmill. I was like treadmill. Why is she singing about a treadmill? So that <laughs> alone made me want to hear the song, right? Yeah. I listened to it and I was like, very nice concept. You're on a treadmill. I you know going. I actually started smiling when I was listening to the song. I was like, yo. <laughs> then I'm listening to the lyrics and I'm like, I can relate to this. Like, you know what I mean? As I'm not a Calypso near, no, but they, everybody could relate to this. At work, you work in, you don't really want to be at work. You want to be rich. You want to be living your own life. You're not going anywhere. It's the same paycheck that pays the same bill. So every month. <laughs> right. So when I heard it, and I'll tell you the first thing that I said um after watching the um the finals, I go, they're not listening to that song. They're not listening to that song. Because the lyrics in that song, man, that everybody could relate to the song. And that's why I love that song so much. So in my opinion, you won the crown twice. <laughs> that <laughs> night was no <low> freaking. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I can imagine. Wow! I think they're hearing the rhythm and they're seeing the um, the movement, and they're saying it's not calypso; it's more of a maybe it's closer to a soca type of right. thing, you know. And and like you said, it wasn't something that they were used to. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Sometimes they have to come out of that box oh, and yeah. move forward. Sometimes, they, and that's what sometimes makes the music stay stagnant and doesn't grow because they just want to stay the same way. They don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. And I mean, you have people who have one hit wonders and that one song they write for their, for their entire lives. Yep. And then, you know, you figure, boy, what else could I possibly write that could actually make a hit or like people who want to listen to years after I've sung it and treadmill, I think has broken the barrier. Um, right after Children, uh, Let the Children Be Children, that's my biggest song that's, ever. Yeah, that's a, that's a big And time. then Woman Time, oh, that was that has been and still is an anthem today. Mm -hmm. And now Treadmill, like, I mean, those songs I think people remember the, the, the most and the best. Um, it's really crazy. Anywhere I would go to perform, that song has been requested. So for two years, that song has been, whew, 
I actually just performed it a couple of days ago at a graduation. It was a special request. Right. And it is a song to get you off your feet. Yep. Yes, you listen and you get the lyrics. You can write a voice about your life alone in treadmill. It it didn't segregate or stereotype. It just it spoke about everybody and every single person. I am sure in this world has a a treadmill experience in their life. Of course. So it could be a relationship that's just bad and you you just in it in it in it and you don't want to get out of it. Where's the growth? Aren't you gonna get married? Aren't you gonna get out of that bad um relationship and find something new? Are you so accustomed with it with this being your norm that you're going to accept it? So treadmill, I think, spoke numbers and spoke values to a lot of people. And I think it it meant a lot to me. That's one of the things I love about having to choose songs or pick songs or sing songs. I believe if I'm gonna pick a song. Especially in Calypso, because as, I, as you know, it's a competition. I want it to be something that has a meaning. It has a value. And I can relate. Most of my songs, if not all, I can relate. And that's what that's the beauty about me being able to choose songs. Because I always get some insight. or self, I always put myself in the song. Make it a part of me. And that's what I think one of my strengths. That's one of my strengths. I, I, I have to be one with my music. I perform it a lot better. My confidence is different. Um, mm -hmm. The way people see me when I perform is different as well. So I think if you know me very well, or if you're a person who follows Tasha P, you can know when Tasha P doesn't like a song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's those little details that make you know that people are really watching yeah. you. Yeah. So, I mean, I never thought I'd ever be Tasha P. I, I always knew Tasha P. Little girl in school being called Tasha P because there were always two Tashas in my class. So there was a Tasha M and a Tasha P. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me yes. ask you, uh, despite everything going on right now with the pandemic, and so you think um, North America will see you on tour anytime soon? Well, I actually just came from Texas uh, about two weeks ago. I had to go to perform for the Dominica Houston Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. It was a great experience uh, being able to perform in Texas for the very first time and getting to feel um, the audience. I, I would say the audience because before I went to do the performance, there were special requests from the people who wanted to attend the event. So I, I did my best to do that. And it was around Christmas time, just before the week before Christmas. So mm -hmm. I got to incorporate some other genres in there too. It was, it was a good experience. Nice. I was wondering where you were when I saw that escalator. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! That's I'm just I've just been posting a lot of um throwbacks. So everything oh. so far has been a throwback. Unless if that's why I try to put the the years and the dates at the bottom when I'm labeling the videos. Oh okay okay. Yeah yeah. So um, I don't know if we have anything from Facebook that you guys may want to ask um before we let go, Miss. Yeah, I no. saw a lot of comments coming in, but I couldn't zero I in on them because they were coming in. Like, I know, please. but all people are supposed to be checking that. I don't know if they're doing that. So, <laughs> so I'm asking. Um, uh, what can we, how can we follow you? How can the viewers that have never followed you or don't know how to find you, how can we find you, Tasha P? Well, I have a Facebook page. I have a personal Facebook page. I also have a Tasha P Facebook page. I also host a karaoke with Tasha P. It's been a virtual thing recently but i've been doing it for about three years now i also have that page karaoke with tasha p if um i also have an instagram page so you can check out my instagram uh where else so many different social media platforms i'm on tiktok um okay. i I've, I've been trying the new trends because you don't want it it will to leave you behind you have to kind of right. just catch on it. No, on it every single day because i do work eight to four i try my best to um, keep adding stuff and trying things and keep doing things to put out there. Right. So I'm definitely be looking forward to posting that video for you guys to see. Lord, I yeah. I don't think we want. I think we want to see that. <laughs> so, but um, I will yeah. say Toronto and New York are waiting your arrival, but. Well, you never know. Maybe Atasha and Peter can come and give you guys a little show that, because it's that that be on the side. A little that show. Be and we've been <laughs> waiting to travel. I mean, I I don't want to say waiting to travel like we're missing or dying yeah. to travel, right. but That's we haven't traveled in a few years, and I think yeah, we're yeah. looking forward to our next tour, and Canada hopefully Toronto being one of our stops. Well, DJ yeah. Kaza can open for you, you know. I, DJ, I, 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 DJ Kaza, I, I wear multiple hats, you know. I can open <laughs> oh, you're <a> DJ. <laughs> 
all kind of things behind the scenes, you know. Oh, well, sorry. as long as I get to meet Jude, Jules, I am yeah. I'm good. Am I gonna meet Jules when I come? Of course, she's 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 right around the corner, so don't worry. Right around the corner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's right around the corner. Would love to meet you as well. Um, there's a question here. Are you participating in any calypso competitions this year virtually? Well, as you all know, the pandemic has prevented us from doing any kind of large show uh, of any magnitude. Uh, there's a protocol for everything in terms of only people can show up and so on. So we did the virtual Calypso show last year, and I think we're, we're going to try to do it again this year. And mm -hmm. yes, I will be performing. I don't know if I missed yeah, it. But and and we're looking forward to that. Definitely. Another. There's another question coming up yeah, right at the bottom. What's your first song in 2020? My first song, there was only all last year, there was 2020, 2020. as Treadmill and All Hands on Deck. That's yeah. uh, well, my first song was Treadmill, Peter Later. Yeah, you missed that question, Peter. We spoke about that for a little while. All right. So yes. last question before we go, or last statement, however you want to take it. Um, the, tar the karaoke with Tasha P. How long have oh. you been doing that? Because you've been doing that for a while now. Three years. Three years and that's been going nice every every thursday well there's there's the ins and outs because in the beginning when the pandemic just started we did it every thursday in your own space in your own place and right. then dominica opened up again uh just before we had that second surge and i used to i was back out in different restaurants and bars and parties and weddings etc doing it all over the country Mm -hmm. and then we had to stop again so it's back being virtually done now i'm actually still doing it from home but right. i'm using a new platform now so well i'm still using my whatsapp status but i'm more or less doing something similar to what you guys are doing now mm -hmm. but on google meet and we actually have people performing live uh, um in their spaces or sending videos still and we play it in between a nice little rapport happening right. during the, the every thursday but again there was a little pause for the christmas season so hopefully we right. can jump right back into that but we're not sure what's really going on for now but every thursday the thursdays are signature nights to right. do it most definitely so you guys Robin, were you dropping a hint for me because you saw my um uh, my karaoke video or uh you well, have a karaoke just... video um well yeah i mean <laughs> hey I you can't. I, I will leave that with you. You and Tasha will do with that. <laughs> but you will talk. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha, I want to thank you for joining us tonight, man. Like, this was big. Um, you know, I learned a few things I didn't know before. I thought I knew all, but, you know, I learned a few things. So thank you for joining us. And um, I hope we can do this again in the future. Of course. No problem. Anytime. It's my pleasure getting to see some new faces and getting to be asked a lot of questions. That's fine. And also getting to know that some people out of Dominica knows more about me than some people <laughs> from Dominica. Huh? I just happen to do my research. I'm going to do a research. <laughs> I, I think I think somebody's at my door. <laughs> oh, you're trying to escape now, aren't you? Yeah, but it's my pleasure. I don't mind doing these things because it's always good to sometimes know the, the artist behind the scenes as opposed to just the person you see on stage you could relate better and you could understand more about certain parts you know of, of how they are or what how they are and who they are thanks all right guys that's miss tasha p the only queen of dominica fast road match and monarch and all that stuff goes so thank you for joining us we will see you guys well i gotta say thanks to jules and it was nice you know you know what jules let me ask you a question how you felt tonight you good you i felt pumped energetic i'm so glad that i got to do this episode and i'm looking forward to doing more and tasha was a great great person to interview so of course i had fun yeah tasha has great energy so Kaza, next week we do the same thing again. Yeah, man. Uh, my apologies. I really enjoyed that interview. So good night, folks, from <laughs> Dissect. <laughs> I was really enamored by the conversation, so forgive me in doing so many things behind the scenes. But we really hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. And thanks yes. for the support. Hope you guys subscribe on YouTube. I can find us on the Island Therapy as the channel. Don't forget to subscribe to Joe's channel. Don't forget to support Tasha P. 
2022 and do it properly and next week we keep it calypso we bring a former king yes right. yes we we have we have hunter we have hunter on deck yes sir so we will see you guys next week saturday right back here tdn tv islands therapy on youtube follow tdn tv and of course jules got her stuff coming back and it's coming back soon right jules you my podcast be... yeah your podcast ah uh, soon soon i mean i have you guys now so i can figure right. that out all right so we'll see you guys next week right here all right you guys have a blessed week blessed weekend godspeed <laughs>